worship you this morning, Lord. We declare together that it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. At the center of it all. Sing it. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. This is indeed the day that our Lord God has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. It's Monday. It's the 28th of March, 2022. And guess what? It's the last Monday in the month of March. God has been good to us. He has kept us and he continues to keep us day after day after day. And he has seen us through and we give him all the honor, all the glory and all the praise. Good morning. You're listening to Adoration FM 88.9, broadcasting online also at adorationfmsvg.com. And you're also listening to Chronicles Christian Radio, ccradio.co. My name is Vanola Glasgow, and welcome to our mid-morning radio show for Monday, 28th March, 2022. Indeed, Jesus is the center of it all, as we give the Lord Jesus Christ all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that he deserves. Jesus, you... Jesus be the center, say, Jesus be the center of my life, Jesus be the center of my life, from beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you. Center, it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the hands, Jesus be the center. It's all about, all about you. It's all about. We pray from my heart to the hands, Jesus be the center. center of your church indeed it's all about jesus jesus at the center is he the center of your life is jesus the center of what you do let the lord jesus christ lead you and guide you in all that you do at this time let's open in a word of prayer. heavenly father we give you thanks for today thank you god for your goodness your mercy and your grace thank you god for your ever loving kindness Thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity of being able to speak to your children, your creation, O God. Heavenly Father, as we would have a program today, we ask your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in the name of Jesus. We pray for our listeners, O God, that they may be encouraged and uplifted by your word, that they may strengthen and their faith in you, God, will be secure. We give you all thanks, honor, glory, and praise. Be glorified, Lord Jesus. Be glorified as we lift your name on high. In Jesus' name we pray, thanksgiving. Amen. 
Hallelujah, blessed be the name of Jesus. This song is called Jesus at the Center by Israel and Nibu. And indeed, Jesus, he is the center of all that we do. This is going to our morning worship. Now coming up, songs by Israel and New Breed. Here I am to worship. Rise within us, surely goodness and mercy, featuring Shabbat Franklin. And also, Lord, I lift your name on high by Shabbat Franklin. As we lift up the no other person than Jesus Christ. He who was before the earth was created, and he who is on the throne in heaven, and he who will come again one day. Until such time we worship him, living in his earth, we worship and magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Kings. On mid-morning show, you can hear us Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays in the will of the Lord from 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 12 noon from on Adoration FM and Chronicles Christian Radio. My name is Manuela Gasco. Thank you for being here with me.
awesome, awesome. You can say it awesome. 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 Breathtaking. Marvelous. Magnificent and holy. Magnificent and holy.
Jamaica, surely 
goodness and mercy shall follow me. Hey, hey. follow me. Oh, my.
God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And the Lord God, he has made us glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice, no matter what your situation is. Be glad. Choose happiness. Choose joy. Choose peace. Choose to give God thanks. Choose to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is Lord. He is King. He is Master over all. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. This one is called You Have Made Me Glad by Israel. The present conditions are cloudy. Winds are east northeast at 11 kilometers per hour or 7 miles per hour. Temperature 25 degrees Celsius. Relative humidity 78%. Barometric pressure 1014.9 millibars. 24 hour rainfall 0.3 millimeters. Yesterday's maximum temperature. 29.4 degrees Celsius. Last night's minimum temperature 23.1 degrees Celsius. The synopsis the Atlantic high pressure system is the dominant feature, and the forecast is fair to partly cloudy with isolated showers. There are no weather advisories or marine advisories. Upcoming high tide would be at 3 or 4 p.m. 
and the low tide was this morning at 9.36 a.m. and will be again at 8.22 p.m. The sun rose this morning at 6.03 a.m. and the sun will set this evening at 6.16 p.m. Once again, the weather forecast for today is fair to partly cloudy with isolated showers. And this service has been provided by the government's meteorological office at the Argyle International Airport in Argyle. You're listening to a mid-morning radio show for Monday, 28th March, 2022. My name is Vanola Glasgow and I'm here with you until 12 noon. I must apologize for last week, Thursdays, no program as I had to attend to other duties. But nevertheless, we are here today and we give God all the glory, all the honor and all the praise. The next song I'm going to, sh- I'm going to share with us today at this time would be Go In Your Strength by Chevelle Franklin. my maker You knit me in my mother's womb You are my helper When I call I know you won't chase me away You are my keeper Through it all I know that I
blood of Jesus I prevail over sickness by the blood of Jesus I prevail over sickness I prevail your situation is today you know everybody has something that they're going through know that you will prevail in the name of jesus christ speak life speak hope 
focus on the things that are true focus on the things that are positive the things that that would give you hope that would lift your spirits focus on jesus christ and trust in him at all times i prevail i prevail speak life use your mouth and speak that which you want speak it into the atmosphere i prevail i prevail i prevail i prevail oh god i prevail of Nazareth I prevail the power of the cross the power of the blood the power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you know Jesus Christ he he was before time existed 
we are creatures of time we are elements of time we live in time and so every year we count how many years we have but you see god jesus christ the holy spirit existed in eternity and god he he allowed his son jesus christ to put off his royalty to put off his kingship and to be born into this earth as a poor as a poor child and you see a lot of persons would associate the word jesus with poverty and being poor but know that jesus christ he became poor so that the lowest of persons could associate with him and you see he would he would take you from your poverty and he would give you wealth and riches not just in this life but in eternity and you see jesus christ is the only way to heaven and so we've got to trust in the lord jesus christ we've got to lean on him and no matter what somebody would say whether they're 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 discouraging you from serving jesus christ you've got to know for yourself you've got to know what the lord jesus christ has done for you and you have got to choose to live for him choose to serve him choose to read your bible choose to spend time in his presence hallelujah blessed be the name of jesus at this time i just want to pray and as you could realize our program this morning is not going uh, in the normal no, the normal fashion and so we allow the holy spirit to lead us and to guide us hallelujah let us pray at this time heavenly father we come before your throne of grace lord we just want to thank you we thank you for now we thank you god for your blessings upon our lives we thank you for listeners even now in the name of jesus father you are great you are awesome we just want to love you we just want to thank you for strength we thank you for knowledge we thank you for wisdom we thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us we thank you for life we thank you for the air that we breathe we thank you for strengthening our bodies we thank you god we thank you and we praise you lord our situations are, are different from person to person god but we choose at this time to give you thanks. We choose at this time to give you praise. We choose at this time to lift up your name, Jesus. God, I pray for the mothers. I pray for the fathers. I pray for our nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would give your people a sound mind. That you would help them to focus on you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. We exalt you and we magnify you. Take glory. Take our praise, O oh God before your throne in jesus name i pray thanksgiving amen hallelujah blessed be the name of jesus before we go into our bible meditation bible facts for today i'm going to share another song this song is called no foreign god by chevelle franklin you're listening to a mid-morning radio show here on chronicles christian radio cc radio.co and adoration fm adoration 88.9 you are wiser than the wisest. You are stronger than the strongest. Yes, God, you are richer than the richest. You're clothed with majesty. You're clothed with power. You're clothed with strength. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The earth belongs to you. The heaven belongs to you. Father, we give you glory. Because of you, I will flourish like the palm tree. To you that I love, I 
Indeed, no foreign God can take the place of the true and living God. In fact, they can take the place of the true and living God if we choose to allow that to happen. You see, God, the God we serve, he is, he is the God of Israel. He's the God of Abraham. He is the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He's the Hebrew God. And the Hebrew God is the only true and living God. There are many other gods. And you see, many people would say God. Some, some person's God is Buddha. And so we have to know who God is. And the God who we lift up is Jehovah, Yahweh, Elohim. He is Adonai. And there are many names for him in the Holy Bible. We call him Jah. Hallelujah. And... Uh, he is only accessed through Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible tells us that if thou shalt confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you, you have accessed God. You're a child of God. You're a part of the kingdom of Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Vanola, and you're listening to a mid-morning radio show for Monday, 28th March, 2022. It's the last Monday in the month of March. And how t how fast time is going. And we are we're reminded that we are to redeem the time. We are to maximize the time, make use of our time. Because the time that we have today, it would not come back again tomorrow. Make use of today. Do that which you can do today. Plant if you have to plant today. Share a smile. Do something to encourage somebody else today. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. At this time, I'm going to go into a bit of Bible facts before we go into a word for today. A word for today will be taken from 1 Samuel chapter 17. So you can get your Bibles out and we will be looking at first samuel chapter 17 so now as for bible facts we have 66 books in the bible six six books make up the bible in the bible which is the word of the true and living god jehovah uh, was written by persons of different varying backgrounds some were doctors some were lawyers teachers fishermen 
over a period of 400 years and the bible was transcribed it was put together and the first english format of the bible was officially authorized and released in 1611 by king james who was the then king of england and that's where we got the kjv or the king james version of the bible from so the KJV or the King James Version of the Bible is the closest translation of the Bible from the original writings. And in those days, they would use the best of the scholars of the land to put together this information. And so the Old Testament, it has 39 books and 37 of those books were written in Hebrew. Two of them were written in a language called Amharic. So they had to translate those from that language into English. And at that time, the major language of the earth was Hebrew, then Amharic. And so the New Testament, at the writing of the New Testament, the major language of the world was Greek. So the New Testament was originally written in the language Greek. And most... Uh, half at least half of the new testament was written by the apostle paul so there are 27 books in the new testament and 14 of those books were written by apostle paul and the apostle paul he initially was someone who would have persecuted christians he was he was a religious man and he persecuted christians he went around killing them but he had an encounter with jesus christ himself and the lord jesus christ he commissioned him to do his work and so now paul his his name was changed from saul to paul so at first he was saul saul who who he was even there when stephen was killed and stephen you know he said in the bible there that that he saw jesus at his father's right hand and saul moved from somebody who persecuted christians and he was converted to Christianity. And now he was was going to share of Jesus Christ to many, even to us today. We read the writings and the letters of Paul, the Apostle Paul. And so this reminds us that God can use anyone. God can transform anyone. And we are to pray always for everybody. For the same God that was able to, to call Paul. He is able to change somebody else today from Saul to Paul. And so let us have an open heart and open mind to those around us and to love them with the love of Jesus Christ. God is good. He is great and he is wonderful. And to know what is written in the word, we've got to spend time in the word. We've got to read the word. We've got to listen to it, meditate on it. And so when we do that, God would open up our understanding. God would help us to understand his word. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And so this, is, this represents three different dimensions of time. We have the past, the present, and the future. So Jesus Christ is in all of that. And no matter what our situations are presently, Jesus Christ is there. Jesus Christ is here. And he knew that we would have been in this situation now. Because he existed before. And he knows now. And he knows what's going to happen in the future. So it's for us to seek the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek his way. Seek his teachings. And he will in turn lead us. And also for us to make the choice to listen to spiritually uplifting programs spiritually uplifting whether podcasts or recordings or sermons that are based on the bible that would help us to understand god's word okay i pray that you were blessed by that by that uh short word that was said a while ago now we're going to go into our bible meditation for today and our bible meditation is taken from first samuel chapter 17 and here we would hear of the battle with the philistines and israel against the philistines where the israelites they they were challenged by goliath of gath 
And uh, I love, this is one of the stories that I love in the Bible. Because here we understand uh, the, the, the principles that are outlined there that we can pick out from and learn from and apply them to our own lives. So at this time we are going to listen to 1 Samuel chapter 17. You're listening to a mid-morning radio show. My name is Vanola Glasgow as we lift up no other person than our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Samuel is an Old Testament book. It is after the book of it is after the book of Ruth. We have Ruth, then we have 1 Samuel. So here now, let's go into a word. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and were gathered together at Shoko, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shoko and Azekah in Ephah's Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening, and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn, and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand. And look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the sheep with a keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight, and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage, and ran into the army, and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, 
Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab his eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, <laughs> Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? <laughs> I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another, and spake after the same manner, and the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said moreover, The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, uh, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. 
Therefore David ran, and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted, and pursued the Philistines, until thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Shearaim, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, Enquire thou whose son the stripling is. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse, the Bethlehem. 1 Samuel chapter 18. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day, and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant, because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him, and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass, as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played, and said, Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand as at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him, and made him his captain over a thousand, and he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, because he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, Behold my elder daughter Merab. Her will I give thee to wife. Only be thou valiant for me, and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, huh. Let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I? And what is my life, or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it came to pass at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel, the Maholathite, to wife. And Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David, and they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law in the one of the twain. And Saul commanded his servants, saying, Commune with David secretly, and say, 
Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. And Saul's servants spake those words in the ears of David. And David said, Seemeth it to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed? And the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this manner spake David. And Saul said, Thus shall ye say to David, The king desireth not any dowry, but an hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to be avenged of the king's enemies. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore David arose and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men. And David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michael his daughter to wife. And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass, after they went forth, that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by him. And there we have our Bible meditation for today, taken from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17 and 18. Listen to this song by Israel and New Breed, going to another level.
Sing it, say it, believe it. We're going to another level. It's time to move up. It's time to go up. It's time to get to your next level. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You're listening to a mid-morning radio show. It is now 11.34 a.m. At this time, we go through a short exhortation on what we just heard from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17 and chapter 18. My name is Vanola Glasgow and join me in the will of the Lord on Monday, Tuesday and Thursdays from 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 12 noon as we would focus on Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ and lift up his name and his name alone. This morning we heard from 1 Samuel chapter 17 and this is a story that we would have heard at church and from different times, dif- from time to time, sorry. So from time to time we will hear this story in churches and at Sunday schools, at youth meetings and even as a motivational talk, you know, to face our giants and to knock them down just as how David did to the giant Goliath of Gat. Now let's look at this story now from a biblical perspective in terms of all the information that is written there. Now we understand that the Philistines, they gathered their armies to battle. So this was a time to battle. This was a time for war. And here it says that the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and on the other mountain the there was Israel. So there was Israel on one mountain and for the Philistines on the other mountain. And there was a valley between them. So the Philistines, I mean, we could think of this similar to like an oval where you would have two sides playing, whether it's cricket or football or netball. So you have on one side, you have, uh, let's say side A and the other side, we have side B. And then there are those who are down on the court or on the field who are playing so here the philistines are on one mountain israel on another mountain and there's a valley between them and so the champion from the philistines whose name was goliath of gath and the bible says that his height was six cubits and a span so here we have to translate what cubit and span means in our modern day measurements all right and i do not have that right here with me at the time so i can't tell you exactly how much that is all right but that was about now my bible notes tell me two other manuscripts says that goliath was six feet and nine inches tall right so i'm not sure if that's how much six cubits and a span translates to i'd have to do some further investigation and research into this but however goliath he was six cubits and a span tall and he had a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was five thousand shikas of brass so it was heavy and The Bible goes on to tell us his description and all the different things that he had on, all the protective gears that he had on. And this tells us that he was a strong man. He was well built. He was a man who knew war and he was able to fight. This is this was his thing. This is what he was prepared for. He's been preparing for this for all his life. And this giant Goliath of Gat, he would would call out to the Israelites and say, you know, verse 10 of First Samuel 17 says, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. So whilst the armies were on their mountains, they were, the, those who were fighting would go down in the valley and they would fight. So here, Goliath is, is challenging the Philistines to come, send your, send your man down. Look, I'm here. I'm waiting. I'm ready to fight. Come, send your man down. Let's fight. And so, this 
this Philistine had done, the Bible says in verse 16, for 40 days. So for 40 days, which would associate in our, in our modern day time in, would be one month, about one month and 10 days. Sometimes there are 30 days in the month or 31 days, it all depends. And so 30 plus 10 gives us 40. So about one month and, four and 10 days. One month, 10 days equal 40 days. And so this Philistine, he came out and he chanted at the Israelites for 40 days. And for 40 days, no one in the Israelite camp was brave enough to stand against Goliath and fight. Now the Bible tells us that Jesse had eight sons and three of these sons went to fight in Saul's army. So the three of them, the three of Jesse's sons were part of Saul's army. And David, he would have run errands for his father from time to time to carry food for his brothers. And on one occasion... When David went to carry food for his brothers, as his father would have assigned him, he heard what the Philistine was saying. He heard what Goliath was saying. And I believe that David was surprised that here is the Israelites' army, and they are supposed to be at war. They're supposed to be fighting against the Philistines, and they don't. They, the, Philist, the Israelites, don't know who they are. They don't know who their God is. And they, they who should be fighting, they're, they're running. They're afraid of this giant. And so, David, he, he heard what Goliath was saying. And David, he spoke. And he, he wanted to find out more of what was really happening here. He wanted to find out more, and he found out more. But you see, he had a brother there, his older brother, El Eliab. He asked, you know, why camest thou down here? Who have you left those few sheep with in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And here David was saying, but, but what have I done? I haven't done anything. Is there not a cause? And so David he knew that God was able to cause the Israelites to win the battle against Goliath of Gath. And even as, as we have the, the giant Goliath of Gath, remember that whenever you're studying the Old Testament, a lot of these stories are associated to, in our modern day times, battles in the spiritual realm. So, for example, there are principalities and powers that are over every home, that are over every community, that are over every nation. And we can associate them to the giant Goliath of Gath. And just as, as Goliath did for 40 days, taunting and troubling the Israelites, there are different things that can taunt us, that can taunt families and nations. And so, what do we do? We apply these same principles. And the principle that's outlined here is to use what you've got. Use what you have. Use what you're accustomed to. Use what is in your hand. And so the men who David was speaking to, they heard what David was saying. And so they told the king what they heard of this young man who came to deliver food to his brothers at the camp, the army camp. And so Saul sent to call him. And Saul spoke to this young man. And this young man shared his story. He shared his testimony. And he talked of when he was taking care of his father's sheep, how the, the lions came, the bear came, and he was able to save the lamb from the lion and the bear. And so he boasted in this story because God was with him. And he knew the power of God. And Saul gave him permission to go and fight with Goliath. Saul gave him permission. But before he got the permission, 
or should I say, after he got the permission, Saul sought to help in the situation. And David, being a man who learned warfare from the field of animals, he wasn't somebody who, who grew up in, in a war territory or was trained for that, but he knew what he had. He had his sling and his stone. And you see, Saul sought to give David or to dress David with his type of armor with what he was accustomed to do for a while. And so Saul put on David the, the helmet of brass on his head. He put on his coat of mail and he gave him his sword. And David said to Saul, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I cannot use this. I have not proven them. And so David took off. David took off Saul's armor. You see, sometimes, this is, this is very profound here, because sometimes you want to take somebody else's uh, idea and wear it too. But what's for them may not necessarily be for you. What's for them may not necessarily be for me. How they did it may not necessarily be how I would do it. And you see here, David had to take off Saul's armor. He had to take off his way of doing war. And David just had to be himself. I'm here to remind somebody to be yourself. Be you. Be yourself. You are unique. There is nobody else in this world like you. Be yourself. And so David, he went down to the brook. And he took up five smooth stones. And many times preachers would say that the five smooth stones represents Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S, those five letters. And he put them in his shepherd's bag. He put them in his shepherd's bag. And he went onto the battlefield. He went to fight against the well-seasoned. He, well, he went to fight against this man who knew how to fight. He had his sword. He had, his, he had everything that he needed to fight. But David, all he had was what he was accustomed to, his sling and his stone. And what did he do? He went on up. David went on up with his sling and his stone. And he spoke with the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with, with stars? And, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And uh, as we said before, there are many gods, but there are one, there's one true and living God. So the Philistine cursed David by his gods, common G God. And the Philistine said to, Davis, said to David, Goliath, in other words, said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beast of the field. And what was David's response? David responded and said, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And who knows that this is the same God that we're talking about. This is the same God that we are serving here at Adoration FM and Chronicles Christian Radio. The God of the armies of Israel. And so David said unto Goliath, This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And I just want to repeat this part. It says, the battle is the Lord's. You know, sometimes you want to fight and fight and, and, and do what we have to do. But we've got to understand that when we allow God, when we allow God to do what he's got to do, he will do it. The battle is the Lord's. You see here, David knew that God was with him. And we remember that earlier up in, in previous chapters, the prophet Samuel had anointed David. 
he had anointed David. He, so David was already walking in God's anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he was anointed for this time. And you see, the battle is the Lord. So even if you're using your, your sling and your stone, God is in that. And so the Bible says that it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew to meet David, that David hastened and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the ground. Now we know that based on physics and science, that if we knock somebody down from the front, that the person would go backward. But here, the giant, he fell forward. He fell forward upon his face to the earth. And this tells us here that he is he's in a position of of bowing. All right? So he fell forward or in a position of worship. And this could only tell us that for sure God was with David. And so the Bible says that David prevailed over the Philistine. And with his sling and his stone, David won. He was and he took the Philistine's own sword and cut off his head cut off his head and when the head is gone then there isn't any connection with the head and the rest of the body and that's it there's no more life what is the giant that is in your life what is a giant that is in your life what is a giant that keeps taunting you that keeps pushing its ugly head up and showing that I'm here Know that that giant can be removed if we use, if you use what is in your hand, if you use what you are accustomed to. Use that gift, that talent that you have, that thing that you think it's, it's not important, it's not significant, that skill, that gift, that talent that you say, oh, no, nobody's going to study me with this. No, that's your breakthrough. That would cause you to go to the next level. Now you see, David used what he has and God helped him. God allowed it that the stone went right into the forehead of the giant. That little part of his head that didn't have any armor, any piece of armor. And that caused the giant's demise. That caused the giant's destruction. That giant that has been taunting Israel for 40 long days. They won. Israel won as a result of this young man who was chosen by God for that time. And Saul, he didn't ask before, you know, whose son is this? But after the war, he asked, you know, whose son is this? And David ended up becoming the king's son-in-law. He ended up becoming the king's son-in-law. But we realize that David behaved himself wisely because he knew that King Saul hated him. And King Saul was out to destroy him. And this is a gentle reminder for all of us that there are persons who would see you and seek to destroy you. They would pretend to love you. And they would kill you if you allow them to have that opportunity to kill you. And we heard in 1 Samuel chapter 18 where Saul tries to kill David several times when David was playing the harp for, for David, for Saul. Now David would play with his hand the music for Saul. And the, the, the evil spirit that was on Saul would leave. And so, whilst David was playing his music, he would watch Saul and look out at Saul. And Saul, Saul cast a javelin at David to smite him to the wall. But 
David avoided David avoided Saul's presence twice. So he escaped that two times. And we will say, but why is he still there? You see, the same David is the same David who wrote Psalm 23, where he says there in verse 4, let me make sure I get it and make, get it correctly, Psalm 23, in the Holy Bible, verse 5 that is, verse 5. David himself, he says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So we could have said, but David could go back home by his father. But here now, David, he was the king's son-in-law. And David, he had responsibilities because now he was married to the king's daughter. And so David, he was right in the presence of the one who was out to destroy him, his own father-in-law, the king of Israel, King Saul. So what would he do? Would he run? Would he run from his presence every time? In fact, he ran, yes, but he still had to be there. And so he behaved himself wisely. David behaved himself wisely. And so because of this, the Bible says that Saul was afraid of David. Saul was afraid of David. And stories like this would help us to understand the different things that happen in the earth because there's nothing new under the sun. This would help us to stay closer to our Lord Jesus Christ. And so my prayer today is that we would learn from, from what is written here. And know that no giant, nothing at all that would seem impossible is impossible with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is possible in the name of Jesus. With Jesus Christ, all things are possible. And we are to continuously trust in him, knowing that he will cause the giants that are in our lives to fall on their faces. But you and I, we've got to use what is in our hand. We've got to use what we know, what we have experienced with. Hallelujah. This time, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we thank you for the word today. Thank you for the word. And thank you, God, that your word would not return unto you void, but it would accomplish that which is sent forth. It would accomplish in the hearts and the minds of your creation here in the earth. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are the same God. You're the same God who helped David to destroy the giant. And help us, O oh God, to destroy the giants in our own lives. Help us to destroy the giants, Lord God, that would push up their heads and try to taunt us, whether for 40 days or 40 years or how many ever years. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We exalt you on today, Lord, and we thank you for bringing us thus far. You have been so good to us. You have been good to us. You provided food, shelter, clothing, and we are thankful. We are thankful, O oh God. Continue to be with your people everywhere. But for those who are on the roads, those who are in school, wherever they are located. May your peace, your joy, your blessings overshadow them in the name of Jesus. Those that work, O oh God. Lord, bless your people everywhere. All of us in Vincent and the Grenadines, all over the Caribbean islands, and all around the world. We ask your protection in the name of Jesus. Lord, your hand on this earth. Remember even the war in Ukraine and Russia, oh God, between Ukraine and Russia. Lord God, your hand is on it, on it all. We pray of your protection upon the mothers, the children, those who are frustrated, and those who are saddened. God, let your blessings, let your glory still fall through these places that they will come to the saving knowledge of jesus christ and they will proclaim that jesus christ is lord we bless and exalt your name heavenly father and we thank you lord for what is happening in the earth as we continue to live our lives one day at a time trusting you serving you and living for you be exalted O oh god be exalted be exalted be exalted O oh jesus in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening today. 
My name is Vanola Glasgow and this has been another mid-morning show for Monday, 28th March, 2022. God is good. He is great. He is wonderful. And he is worthy to be praised. Lift him up. Lift him up. No matter what it is that you're going through, lift him up and let the giants know that you are an overcomer and you are going to win. You are going to win because Jesus Christ, he won. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lamb of God. Blessed be the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Bless the Lord. Join me in the will of the Lord on Tuesday as we will have another edition of our mid-morning radio show. I leave you with this song by Chevelle Franklin. Worthy is the Lamb.
Psalm 23. 